Welcome to our story with the The role will continue this mini class. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, so that's uh, lecture five. We will uh, uh, start uh, the, the proof uh, of, of the main case uh, dealing with the part uh, which looks at the derivative. Okay, and, and, and uh, uh, on Wednesday, we'll get to the uh, core uh, problem where we will uh, use what we learn today about the differential to control uh, actually the entropy. Okay, so I try to put the slides uh, in this uh, page here. Okay, once I put it in there. Okay, so let's, so that's the, so first I will recall uh, what we are doing. Uh, and uh, I will uh, state in uh, our situation, what exactly is the failure of uh, failure of uh, uh, continuity tells us uh, about the dynamics on the projective uh, extension. Okay, and then we'll uh, build, uh, we'll see that we are looking for what we are looking for, we call them natural blocks. So first we'll build the long, uh, blocks where we see essentially only expansion or only contraction. And from this, we will deduce what we need about the neutral blocks, which will be the property of the tangent dynamics that uh, will allow us to, to control the entropy uh, another day. Okay, so that's just, so that's essentially a slide from the first lecture or so. Okay, just to recall the notations. And for those who haven't uh, weren't there before, so I'm looking at a smooth diffeomorphism of a surface at its invariant uh, measure. Okay, what I say, I say invariant measure, but I always mean uh, invariant Borel probability measures. Okay, which is a compact uh, space with respect to the weak topology. And especially I'm interested in the ergodic measures. Okay, and I'm looking at the <laughs> topological entropy and the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy, which are related by this classical result, the rational principle. And I'm focusing on the top Lyapunov exponent of the measure. Okay, what is known. Uh, either from the basics of the, the, the theory or from the Yondin theory, is that in our setting, uh, these two functions, the entropy of a measure and the top uh, exponent of a measure are semi upper semi-continuous, but not continuous. So we are investigating the defect of uh, uh, semi-continuity, you know, the absence of lower semi-continuity. And as I explained, okay, what we, okay, I'm focusing on, on a, what I call the main case of the joint result with uh, Sylvain Crovisier and Henri Sarri, which is when uh, first you ask, so you, in all these business, you're considering a sequence of ergodic measures. Okay, so by compactness, you can assume that it converge, that they converge, sorry. Uh, and now we make a further assumption, which is not very serious uh, in this case, which is that the limit is ergodic. Okay, this is really an assumption. And what we say is that, okay, so now we look at the limit of the, of the top Lyapunov exponent. We assume it exists. That's not really a, a big uh, uh, cost because, uh, okay, just, uh, go to a subsequence if you need. Okay, and now what we know is that this function, the uh, top Lyapunov experiment is upper semi continuous. So the, the limit will be less than uh, the exponent of the limit. 
So I can write it since the, as a, a number times the value of the limit, this number beta, and saying that I am uh, upper continuous is to say that beta is less than one. Okay, and I assume, this is really an assumption, that uh, this limit is positive. So beta is also positive. And now uh, what we are going to uh, strive for is to show that uh, if we have, oh, sorry, uh, that's not what I wanted. So here, okay, so here this is the topological entropy actually, because the entropy is uh, a person continuous. So therefore, uh, no, sorry, no, no, forget about that. This I, I, I wanted to write, this is true, but what we are focusing on is uh, you replace this with the topological entropy. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a weaker statement, but it's uh, sufficient for what we want to, to, to prove for our main result. And then uh, later at the end, I will explain what is the main statement, how you can understand it, understand it and what you can make of it. Okay, but for now I want to, to focus on this or rather this uh, simple situation where uh, I want to say that if you have a defect uh, in the uh, in the lower semi-continuity of the exponent, then the entropy is bounded away. Uh, from the maximum. Okay, so this will be. And this bound is quite explicit in the sense that, okay, if beta equal one, this is, you, you will not say anything uh, meaningful. Uh, but uh, otherwise, what it tells you is that if you have a failure of lower semi continuity, then you have a constraint in the top of in the entropy of these measures you take. Okay, that's so uh, the goal is we assume this and we want to, to get an, uh, an entropy bound. Okay, any question? Okay, so let's uh, start. And today we'll uh, extract, build from this uh, beta uh, something about the, uh, the tangent dynamic. Okay, so the first step that we uh, looked at before is to say, okay, we want to, so, okay, so, sorry. So first I'm going to assume, I mean, if this limb soup is zero, then I can just uh, go back to bed. So I will assume it's positive. So in particular, uh, by real inequality that we saw last week, uh, we know that these measures are hyperbolic. Okay, and this is also true for mu, uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, for instance, because the exponent is, is a, a person we continue to see. Okay, so now we, we are in this setting of hyperbolic measures. Uh, we use, as I explained last week, we use the projective dynamic, which is the extension of the map F by its differential, so that we have, a, we see a direction, okay? Oscillator's theorem tells us that when we have hyperbolic uh, measures can be lifted uh, to, the, to the stable and unstable uh, sections or horizontal graphs, which are invariant and uh, measurable. And we saw that uh, in particular, if you consider an ergodic invariant measure on the surface, then uh, it has uh, exactly two ergodic lifts, one uh, which is an unstable lift, an unstable lift on uh, the graph gamma plus, and the other which is the stable lift on the graph uh, gamma minus, and defined by the stable space of Celedes stable spaces. So that for an ergodic measure, lift, you have two of them, and if you just consider as we uh, have here. Uh, an arbitrary lift uh, of an ergodic measure, then it's just uh, some convex combination of the two possible ergodic lifts. Okay, so the, by definition, 
and this is for the whole point of looking at the projective dynamics, the Lyapunov exponents are exactly the averages of the dilation uh, with respect to the uh, correct lift. Okay, so uh, the, the top Lyapunov exponent is the average of the dilation with respect to this uh, unique lift, ergodic lift, which lives on the uh, graph gamma plus, the unstable lift. Uh, okay, sorry, there is the bottom Lyapunov exponent is given by the other lift. Okay, and also for the limiting measure. Okay, and now we did a computation which was more general than this, but we can, uh, let's just repeat it. Uh, uh, the, what, is, uh, what, we are in, what we have is about the limit of the top Lyapunov exponent for these measures, UK. Okay, by, this, by the formulas here, this, I can just replace this by the integral of the dilation with respect to the unstable lift. Now I use the weak uh, uh, topology to say that this, is, this limit is just the average with respect to the limit measure. Okay, and now I use this little formula. Okay, and I use again my formulas to get back to the exponent. And I get this uh, formula uh, that we saw, uh, even so something more general. So where we have what we should have if the Lyapunov exponent was continuous for this sequence, minus some uh, defect, which is uh, non-zero exactly when alpha is not equal to one. So when the limit of these unstable uh, lifts uh, actually uh, lifts into the uh, gamma minus. So the minus plus, Sorry, which one? Sorry. Yeah, this one could be a minus. This is what you... <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yes, yes. The next one should be plus. Uh, no, this... this this one should be minus, this one should be minus. Yeah, minus terms. Uh, this one is true, but yeah, you're right. This is not what I meant. This is plus. Well, this would be plus here. That's correct. Okay, sorry. So that's the uh, okay. So yeah, the okay, the correct one was uh, mathematically correct, but uh, a little bit stupid. Okay, so and uh, okay, so so. Now we have this quantity alpha, which, well, or rather one minus alpha is the mass that leaked from gamma plus into gamma minus. Okay, we also say that uh, when we are hyperbolic, uh, we, there is nowhere else where the mass uh, should leak. Okay, so now we want to relate this one minus alpha to the quantity we want to make a appear, which is beta, they are not the same. Okay, just you do the computation and you, well, uh, you get that. The, this is equal to uh, beta times lambda plus of mu, and you see what it is. You get this formula. Okay, so it is bigger actually than, uh, uh, if you didn't have the second term, you would just say that, okay, for this proportion one minus alpha, you don't see any entropy. What you have is a little bit uh, better. Uh, it's uh, this proportion, and then you have this extra term that we, we see is quite uh, natural. Okay, and this is what we, so we want to control by this. We want to show that for this fraction of the time, there is no uh, entropy uh, contribution. Any question? Okay, so now this is what we want to do. How can we show that we don't have any uh, entropy uh, creation? Okay, what we are going to do is to look at uh, dynamical balls uh, and uh, refine them 
as we must. And so uh, we are not contributing to the entropy when we don't need to refine. If, for instance, we have this type of situation where, uh, so okay, not only we are going to look at dynamical balls, but actually we will, we will look at unstable curves. Okay, I don't want to, and I cannot be too precise for now. Uh, so what I really uh, want is to see that if I have to say that I have an interval during which there is no entropy contribution, is to say that not only for this interval, but for all uh, smaller intervals starting at the same point, I have no expansion. Okay, this tells us that orbits do not separate, do not get separated, uh, not only at the end, but at any time in between. Okay, this is uh, the definition of, of these uh, balls. So uh, we are led to this notion, to this definition, that neutral block is an orbit segment. So since I want to speak about the differential in a certain direction, it's an orbit segment of a point in uh, the projective extension, which has this, uh, which satisfies these inequalities. Okay, this inequalities mean that what I was exactly what I was uh, saying that if I take, if I look at any iterate starting from the beginning and ending anywhere with, uh, within the interval, uh, I don't see, uh, I have no expansion. Okay, that's one thing, and another property that I will need uh, for the computations, uh, the nonlinear computation to, to make sense is to, to know that I'm only looking at long uh, intervals like that. So this is why there is this, there will be this parameter L, which will be a very large integer. Okay, so that's, you have this, the, this definition with this picture. And those who work in uh, uh, hyperbolic dynamics uh, know uh, we have seen this picture for a long time. Usually it's related to uh, uh, the well-known Huxley's lemma that will indeed uh, uh, surface uh, soon. Okay, so our goal is to <coughs> can be a little more precise. We want to for the derivative. We want to, feel, to find natural blocks that fill this fraction uh, of uh, typical orbits, okay, typical for the measure, uh, sorry, new k hat plus. Okay, since this is, these are the measures that are computing the top Lyapunov exponent. Okay, and this is, and we are more, more precisely, these are the measures that are looking at the unstable direction. And we will compute the, to bound the entropy of the measures. This, this is the direction that we will have to look at. Can you explain again why you think it's related to the last line? Yeah, so what, I don't know. Okay, so you have, I want to prove this. Okay, so I want to, what, what at some point, I will be considering orbits, and uh, for instance, one thing that would be very good, things will be a little bit more complicated, would be if I knew that for a typical, or uh, for almost every uh, point, sorry for a new case, I have neutral blocks. So these are the neutral blocks. I want them to feel a proportion at least one minus beta. Why? Because if I have that, now assume that I am able to prove that when I am in a neutral block, it is indeed the case uh, on the nonlinear level that when I that the unstable curves that I will be looking at, I don't need to refine 
they are covered by uh, dynamic soul bonds. Then to count the entropy, what I will have to do, I will just have to decide how many possibilities I have outside of these intervals. Okay, this will be given to me by the topological entropy. Okay, which tells me very generally that okay, the number of orbit segment uh, is given by the entropy. So when I say this, I'm hiding several problems. One problem is that I have a constant, or if you prefer, I need to get really close to the topological entropy. I need to be considering long enough intervals. Yeah, this is why you, this is one of the reasons why you have this uh, constraint that we all we not only we want natural blocks, a lot of them, but we want that long ones uh, occupy this uh, fraction. Okay, you chose typical things. Yeah, we will see. Uh, uh, today uh, I won't discuss seriously the nonlinear case. I just uh, make some uh, 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 ideology to, just to try to explain why we are doing what we are doing. But uh, for the, I don't want to, be, and I'm not going to be able to be precise uh, about the nonlinear situation. But yeah, that's uh, that, that will be about typical uh, points for the. The questions? Okay, so we had this. So now we are going to to have some fun. Okay, so we have uh, we have to build these uh, these uh, natural blocks. So first, we are going to to see where do we have uh, expansion and contraction. And so for this, we want to use Oscillated's theorem. Okay, Oscillated's theorem tells us okay. There is a full, uh, there is a invariant set measurable with full measure. These are these x plus x minus, on which I see on the stable direction and in the unstable direction, the bottom and the top Lyapunov exponent. Okay, that's that these are measurable sets. Uh, they will have measure. When I say full measure, it's full measure with respect to the limiting measure on u, which has this exponent. But I'm inter I want to make a computation, not for mu, but for this mu k hat plus. So which are just converging to mu. Therefore, I have to get, I have to pass from uh, uh, measurable sets to uh, open sets. Okay, so the first step is to to use the regularity of the measure to replace these invariant variable sets by compact sets, okay, which won't be invariant, but they are contained in the invariant sets. Okay, where well, I can find a comp compact subsets. I can find, when I restrict to the compact sets, I can find a uniform iterate, if it is N1. Okay, I can ask that these subsets these compact subsets have measure almost equal to one. Gamma is a small parameter. Okay, so I have this for k uh, hat minus. I would have the same for k hat plus uh, with respect to mu hat plus. Okay, and then what I have is these things. This, this inequality that when I look at any iterate starting at n1, I see the, the correct Lyapunov exponent. So sorry, if it is k hat minus, okay, it should be lambda minus. Okay, so okay, now I want, as I said, I'm not interested in mu, but rather in this new k. So I have to use this uh, compact set to get to. Uh, open set. So what I do, I take the neighborhoods. Okay, and now it's no longer possible uh, for them to be disjoint. Okay, before they were the 
I started with X plus and X minus given by your cell death theorem. They were by definition disjoint since my two exponents are different. Okay, when I, this disjointness property remained true for the compact sets, they are not invariant, but they are included in disjoint uh, measurable sets. But as soon as I take the neighborhood, I lose uh, this uh, disjointness. However, uh, if I take small enough, so these sets, these compact sets, they were disjoint, the iterates also were disjoint. Therefore, if I fix a time, this is this number N2, which I can choose a huge, uh, I can ask that up to this time N2, the two open sets are uh, still disjoint when I iterate. And not for all times, this is, could not be true in general, but for a very low, large time, I can satisfy this. Okay, so, in, and I can have this property. So now I can have the, I can skip, I can still keep the property about the expansion, except that if I want to have an open set, well, I cannot ask it for all large n, I have to fix one n. So I just see, I just take this n1. Okay, and now since I had, since I took neighborhoods of, of sets with measure close to one for the limiting measure, then this is still, this is still true for my measures. Okay, so I'm here, this is here, mu k plus. Again, I should, uh, okay, so here, let me think. Okay, I want to speak about new k hat plus. Which is the, uh, let me remind you, these new k hat plus, they are converging to this, uh, to this uh, average between uh, mu hat plus and mu hat minus. Okay, which are the one which give up. Uh, almost full measure to these uh, subsets. Okay, so now that I have built these subsets, or this open subset with a big measure, or at least, I mean, they have the measures uh, predicted by uh, alpha, and uh, yeah, they feel almost everything. Now, what, what, what can I say about a typical orbit for new k at plus? Okay, so, so first, because of this, I know that uh, almost all, that uh, a very large fraction of the iterates, very close to one, and this uh, one minus gamma four, is uh, spent inside either u hat plus or u hat minus. Okay, so in this picture, the blue box are the, new, when you visit u hat minus, and uh, the, the red boxes are uh, visits to u hat plus. Okay, so where you see, by definition, you see the, the correct contraction or expansion very close to what the Lyapunov exponents predict. Okay, so that's the, 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 the first step of the argument, but I will need more. Okay, I need, uh, this is why I, I worked uh, for it. I need this, this almost disjointness property. What it tells me is that when I am in, uh, let's say, u plus hat, okay, I can, okay, maybe I go outside, maybe I visit again u hat plus, but I cannot visit u hat minus uh, before a, a minimum time, which is this N2 very large. Okay, so since this N2 is much larger than the time I spend in U hat than this N1, it means that I, before I switch, 
Okay, I can always switch rarely. Okay, because if I was switching all the time, I would be spending most of the time in this uh, region where I cannot be, I am not yet in new hat plus, and I cannot be in new hat minus because of the uh, almost disjointness. Okay, so the, by this construction, I get now, okay, I take my orbit and I uh, paint it in this way by saying, okay, if I am not in a new hat or you hat plus, I wait, okay, eventually I enter, let's say, you hat minus, I draw a little box of lengths in one, I look at the following time, if I am again in new hat plus, I draw another little box of lengths n1 and so on. Maybe here I am not in new hat plus, neither in new hat minus, so I wait. Okay, and at some point I see I start seeing u hat minus. Sorry, this was u hat minus, this is u hat plus. Okay, and now I, I define these long intervals just by saying, okay, I start at the origin that I, uh, of my orbit. Maybe I am in u hat minus, so I am in a long uh, protracting box. Okay, and I stop it only when I see uh, something different. Okay, so this something completely different is you have a block. Okay, and then this gives me an expanding long block. And I, uh, this, I declare that it, I exist, uh, it is finished when I see again a new hat minus and so on, new hat plus. So in this way, I get first I have filled uh, almost all of the orbit with these uh, blocks of uh, moderate size. I, we can even pretend it's size one now. When I see the Lyapunov exponent most of the time, either the, the top or the, bot the, top or the bottom Lyapunov exponent. And because of this, or the fact that the uh, ergodic components are invariant, I was able to say, okay, for this new k hat plus, which are only converging, okay, I, I can switch, but it takes very long time to switch. So I have this structure in two very long blocks where I essentially, I most of the time, okay, here I, I contract and sometimes I don't know what I do. Here I expand and sometimes I don't know what I do. Are there questions? Okay, so now I had this gamma four. Okay, it's some kind of very private joke, but okay. So if you have uh, something uh, this between zero and n, and you know that your bad guys have total fraction less than gamma four, then certainly uh, okay. Now you we have divided this uh, total interval into our long blocks. Okay, and uh, this, now the long blocks, which contains a little bit too much of the uncontrolled uh, times, a little bit too much would be square root of gamma four, this is this gamma two. Okay, themselves, their total length has to be less than uh, square root of gamma four, which is again gamma two. Okay, so this is just some stupid uh, uh, counting telling you that if you took, if the u hat plus and u hat minus filled uh, very fully the interval zero one, then they have to fill uh, quite fully, uh, quite uh, almost uh, all the long dots. Okay, and now, so, I have this picture where uh, in all the all long blocks, okay, I, of course I have some gaps. I mean, a, a long uh, contracting block cannot be spent only uh, visiting u hat plus, okay, because otherwise I couldn't switch to the next uh, long block, but uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's filled up to a uh, gamma square, okay. Uh, the fraction is one minus something very small. 
And now I want to deduce from the fact that I am expanding or contracting, let's say, uh, almost all the time, I want to deduce that I have most of this long block is actually a natural block. Okay, and for this, I use this uh, very nice, uh, this lemma, okay, which is uh, some kind of combinatorial, uh, purely combinatorial stuff. Okay, it tells you you have a finite uh, sequence of real numbers, this A1, AN, they have some average, alpha, some maximum. Okay, and now you fix, you give yourself a target. Okay, so you know that the average for the whole uh, sequence is uh, big, and you want to say that if I target something a little bit less or even rather less, then I will find points uh, where the average is almost equal to this target beta. Okay, and not only there are such points, but they occupy a well-defined well uh, proportion. And so we will apply this to uh, our long blocks to say that, okay, a long block of type u hat minus, because it is almost filled with this u hat minus. Okay, maybe at the beginning, I see many iterates where the map does something unexpected, and this is not at all like a natural block, but uh, almost all the points in the long block will be, we satisfy the estimate uh, given by this lemma. Okay, so for this. Ask you about gamma. There seems to be a small number there. Yes. It seems to be an integer up there. Oh, sorry. So it means for. Yes, because there is, there is this word that I made invisible proportion. Ah, proportion. So sorry, yeah. So anyway, this, uh, sorry about that. You Maybe it should not be taken that seriously. Um, yeah, so what, 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 so let me just, uh, I wrote, Okay, I didn't write it, so okay. So here, what you do is that you, so okay, you have your long block. Okay, of type. Uh, here, contracting a block. So you know it is filled up to a very small fraction. By this good. Uh, times where you actually contract. So of course, when you, if you start, if you try looking here, certainly it is not a natural block because you start by doing something uh, strange, okay? Okay, then you meet, you, and you visit, you had uh, minus, then you start contracting, but maybe uh, the next time you do something strange. And this can happen for some time. But please tell you that there will be a time, let's pretend it's here, there will be times so that when you look at the average, not only the first one, but all, all averages to the end, then all these averages gives you, give you a contraction. Actually at a rate close to the, to the, left, to the bottom exponent. Just because you are, you, you see this uh, exponent in each limit to you had minus, and they feel almost all uh, the. Okay, so essentially, you, I mean, the main step, it's a little bit more complicated because we have this iterate n1, but the main step is to 
the main idea is to look at the to take as numbers AI the characteristic functions of the visits to the good step. Yeah, and then you the maximum is one. The average will be this bigger than one minus gamma square. And now you can take as target one minus gamma, and you do the computation. So you have alpha minus beta, which will be so you have to compute this. This is this gives you a gamma, okay, minus gamma squared divided by gamma. So it's essentially gamma. Uh, no, it's actually one rather than gamma. So not something between. Okay, so let me. So. Okay, let, let me be. Uh, I mean, la, la, last time uh, it, it cost me, but I will do it again. So, just to prove something, actually, so I don't know. Uh, who knows the proof of this lemma? No, no, yeah. well, okay. So, if you don't raise your hand, then you cannot complain that I spent time about that. Okay, so. I, I like it. So first, it's a very useful lemma, and then it's a very nice. It has a very nice proof. Okay, so how does it go? You say that you take. So I, uh, an index is non please or not please where if you have. If you well, if it contradicts the, what you want, so if you have an integer which is bigger than k, okay, okay, such that the average is too big, is too small. Okay, this is less. Then beta. So this is a definition. Okay, so you can take to be a maximal. As a function of case, maximal. Looking at something finite, so there is no difficulty. And now you, you see that uh, non uh, the set of time in Java is, is contained by in the following uh, bad set, which is the, the union over the non please in this is. Of these intervals. Okay, and now you see. Okay, if, so if the bad set is empty, well, maybe I don't know to make it some function. Okay, so now you compute, you compare with the average, you see that, okay, or the sum, the sum could be alpha n since alpha is the average. And it should, it should be what? Oh, sorry, I forgot to say one thing. So this, before I, I have to say that I can choose. Okay, so the, sorry. The, the, the remark here is that if you have an overlap between the two such, Uh, bad uh, intervals, then their union is actually, well, it's, 
Well, it's uh, so what does it mean? So, yeah, what I want to say is that this, that the, the, the union actually was bad. Okay, I want to say that this can be taken at this point. Okay, so why is this the case? Certainly, I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember others. Unfortunate. So let you okay, why are they why can I choose them to be destroyed? Okay, maybe okay, I should not say it like I wanted to say. So I should say I have my non please, uh, my non please uh, indices. Okay, and now when I see one, okay, I have my first non please index, K1, it gives me K1 hat. So I have a first interval of this type. And now I look whether I see. Uh, something non please okay. If I uh, maybe I have to skip and then uh, I see something non please maybe it starts immediately after and so on. So I cover it in this way, let's say by some greedy. Okay, so it's not true that or at least I don't see why now that they should be always defined, but I can choose them. It, I can choose them in this greedy way, and then they are uh, they are uh, automatically disjoint and they cover the set of not please uh, indices. Okay, and now I compare with the sum. The average tells me that the sum is alpha times the length. And then this should be what? It should be less than the sum over the bad indices plus the complement. Okay, the complement. I don't know what, hap what happened, but at what it is equal to A. Okay, and then you write this and you, you get uh, this gives you the bargain. Next one, I can do it, but uh, well, maybe I can do it, yes. So I get the time, so I want everything which is. So I have. This guy, by definition, it is less than beta times the length. Okay, and then you, from that, you get the yeah. Okay, so it's, it, uh, I like this proof because in, in a simple setting, it's the same type of argument, like the one you can use to prove the ergodic theorem and lots of other things in ergodic theory, where you just build this kind of cover uh, and you deduce what you want from it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so, so that's any question?
Okay, so now what, uh, how do I conclude? So now what I have proved is that each time I have a long block of type u hat minus, I have a big part of it. So a fraction of the, of the block itself, which is a neutral block. Now, uh, what I have to say to complete the argument, the construction of my neutral blocks is to say that first, two neutral blocks that intersect uh, define a neutral block. Okay, this time it's true. Okay, if you want to show that the whole, the union is a neutral block, then what do you, you okay, so you have to, Consider the iterates which are still inside the first block, so there is nothing new to prove. And then you have those for which you exceed the first one. Okay, but then what you do is obvious, you use the neutrality of the first block for the its average. Okay, and you complete with the fact that, uh, sorry, not the first one. You use the neutrality of the first block to say that this average is already good since it starts at the beginning of the block. And now you, you complete with this average uh, from the neutrality of the second block. Okay, so very uh, obviously the union of two uh, neutral blocks that uh, really overlap is again a neutral block. Once you know that, you know that any neutral block is contained in a maximal neutral block. Well, you need something uh, more, which is to know that uh, you cannot have an increasing sequence of neutral blocks that always keep increasing. This is because we are looking at neutral blocks in, for, inside a typical orbit uh, corresponding to a, to a positive Lyapunov exponent. Okay, so eventually uh, the Lyapunov uh, catches with us and uh, stop this uh, neutrality. Okay, so, so therefore you can just take the union of all neutral blocks and you will get a disjoint union of maximal neutral blocks just from these uh, obvious reasons. Now, if you, you make two remarks, first remark is if you take a maximal neutral blocks, neutral block, then the corresponding differential over the whole block is almost equal to one. Why? Because when you consider exactly the length of the block, uh, it should be at most one, and you need the, the following iterate to exceed one. Okay, and you have a Lipschitz map, I mean, the, DF is bounded. So if you cross the, the, the threshold, you have to be close to it. That does that. And the other thing is that we have shown that we have that a lot of the visits to U minus are contained in uh, long blocks, which themselves are essentially covered by uh, neutral blocks. So we know that these neutral blocks. Uh, these maximal neutral blocks uh, essentially contain all the visits to U hat minus. Okay, I have this gamma business, but uh, okay, gamma is small. Uh, I forget about it. Okay, so now what you have, you have a neutral blocks that contain all the contraction, but they are neutral actually when they are because they are maximal. So this tells you that they have to. Not only to, so then what do you have to add to your contracting long blocks? Well, you have to add expanding thing, how much exactly what you need to get back to neutrality. Okay, and this gives you this uh, formula. Okay, since this is when you are uh, expanding, you expand at this rate. Okay, so you need, you, when you were contracting, you contracted at this rate, 
So you need to have this proportion uh, so that the total, uh, the block is uh, complete. The maximum total block is actually neutral. Okay. So the conclusion is that you could give me arbitrary small gamma, arbitrarily large L. Okay, now take uh, to realize this, I have to take K the indices of these measures uh, large enough, probably very large. I mean, mu K hat plus has to be very close to mu hat. Okay, and then for all large L, I will have this property that the uh, 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 orbit segment, the typical orbit segment, uh, will contain this uh, union of disjoint neutral blocks uh, who together have essentially this, uh, this uh, occupy uh, this fraction. So this one minus uh, beta up to something uh, which I will give. Oh, yeah, so of course I have, I am uh, disregarding a number of things. So of course you need uh, to, it depends ex exactly how you, you write, but you, you, you need to have N large enough when you, we are using Birkhoff and the big theorem all the time. So for instance, you may have to cut inside a long block and you can wonder exactly what happens and that type of thing. But, uh, in the end, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now is certainly a, a good time to, to stop unless you have questions. Oh, so beta is, beta is, one minus beta is equal to that. And one minus beta and beta comes not, not from here, it comes from the Lyapunov exponent. So keep it because that's the key thing. It's good that you that we all think about it. This is this is the definition of beta. Okay, and we make this one assumption that everything is perfect. Well, actually here we Okay. So this, uh, what you see here is that we, to control the entropy, you don't really need contracting. You just need that it does not expand. So it is, this is why you have this extra factor. Okay, alpha is the time is the fraction of the time where you contract. Okay, but actually, uh, because of, because you control the entropy as long as you do not expand, you get this extra factor. Okay, this extra factor. When you look at it like that, you say, well, what is this kind of formula doing here? But actually, the, the good way to think about it is beta, and here you see it's completely natural. And in fact, it's important for uh, other applications. So yeah, this is uh, the, 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 the rate is uh, as already started. Okay, 10 minutes.